Hey, hi. I'm Dad here from Big Doof Runner. Uh, Run Disney has released the um, course maps for the 2020 Walt Disney World uh, Marathon Weekend race courses. So um, back a few months now, um, Disney had announced they were going to add Blizzard Beach. And I had done a video um, kind of highlighting my guesses uh, of where they might change the courses uh, to, to kind of do the things they kind of wanted, uh, indicated they were going to do at that time. So I made some guesses, and now they've actually released the course, and now it's kind of time to uh, review and see where we actually stand, what they actually came back with, how close my guesses were, and um, see what uh, uh, what changes Disney has made, and are they positive, negative, that kind of thing. So have a look at that. So I will have a link down below for... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll have a link down below for uh, that my guesses video. I've actually had it in two spots. I had it on the original Big Goofy Runner YouTube channel, and then uh, uh, a little while ago, I moved it onto this channel here, where you're watching, where uh, we amalgamated our family channel and my running channel to just make it one big channel. And uh, so I'll give the link to those videos just to, uh, to so you can go back and see what my guesses were and just how. Uh, how wrong I was and how right I was for some of the stuff. So anyway, so we're gonna switch now to the computer screen and uh, my little webcam that's nowhere near as good quality as the uh, that camera there. So on the Run Disney site, uh, guide Run Disney events, events Walt Disney World with a bunch of dashes in there. You can probably see the link right there. I'll put the link down below as well. Uh, but if you just go to the Run Disney site, you can easily navigate to it. So they have some reminders, specific reminders now the excuse me the one thing to remember is that the marathon is now starting a half an hour earlier than it has in the previous years uh and it's going to become obvious kind of why and why you've got to be there on time early you got to be off your buses or your own personal transportation um much earlier than normal so um should arrive at epcot by 3 30 a.m uh with the new course running through the parking lot, late arrivals could miss the start or experience significant delays getting to the corral. So essentially, you may have trouble getting to your corral because people starting ahead of you may be running in front of you and you can't get to your corral. So that is that is interesting. Uh, they have three maps here. you got your course map, uh, the, the staging map at the start, and the finish staging map. Uh, so let's start with the... Um, the uh, start map here. So um, not significant changes um, here, really. The Welcome Plaza, so here you got your security as you walk in here. The, the start uh, staging, uh, start staging and reunion lot, so entertainment through here, that kind of stuff. Pre-race water, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, so this isn't much different than normal. This is where we normally come out. Coming out here, the Runner's Square may be a little bit different. This is um, the new name for the Runner's Retreat, Runner's Square this year. Uh, looks vaguely square-like. It's probably still a little bit more rectangular. Uh, but yeah, uh, you walk out. Anyone who's ever done the races is very familiar with this. Walk out, out to the, uh, the corral starts, uh, A to G, and then H separated. When we get into the course map, you'll see that the course, the running course, actually runs right through here. So that's, um, yeah, right through this area here. So that's um, why you need to be at your corrals on time. It's going to be better for everybody. So let's get right into the course map. So I had predicted that they would go back to the old school way of doing things of, um, well, an older version of the race course where they, uh, they started with a run through Epcot. Um, and then, then made your way out to Magic Kingdom. And that's essentially what they have done here. Um, when I did my, uh, my guess video, um, the map I looked at had um, a split route through Epcot. So there was two different paths through Epcot to try and reduce some of the congestion. They haven't done that. So we're going to have to really hope the corrals work uh, to get through this properly. So let's hope. Uh, yeah, so you start, uh, we just, we, we had the uh, corrals there, so um, starts here, and coming back through the parking lot, basically entering Epcot at about 2.3 miles, I would guess. Um, 
Now it looks like it's probably a little bit around the back side, so we're technically in Epcot, but we're in the backstage area here. I believe, uh, shoot, I can't zoom in any more than that, but I believe that right here is the um, kind of the backside of the living with the land stuff based on the shape of that. That looks like the geodesic dome. So similar to last year's, the 2019's half marathon near the end of the course, you do a little run through the backstage area. Uh, that looks like that's what that's going to be as well. So it's definitely a different course through Epcot than what it was for the 2010 one that I was looking at. Uh, so it looks like probably about mile three is when they'll bump us into um, part of Future World. Probably that looks to me like it's near Imagination Pavilion. Uh, then we'll do a little bit of a run through there, just get a, a taste of going through um, World Showcase. We'll get to see Mexico Pavilion. Uh, before they bump us back out. So the little inset here gives a bit better look. So yeah, so it's in, looks like in behind the Imagination Pavilion here, where we'll come out. Yeah, so here is the Living with the Land, or the Land Pavilion. And this looks like the Living with the Land, the uh, geodesic dome that you would go through on that ride. So, um, oh, that's a sharp corner. That should be interesting. But yeah, so they come through here at the Imagination Pavilion, just through some of these little uh, sidewalks on the side that come between World Showcase and Future World and um, come across the main bridge here. Just touch the edge of World Showcase, go past Mexico, and then um, out. And this is where it's a little confusing because you got a little bit of a duplication here. Uh, and out the exit there. And uh, so yeah, when we get back to near the end of the course, this is, this is the end of the course here that does this. So um, as a preview, the end of the course does not go through Future World. You do not get to run under Spaceship Earth, uh, but with all the construction here for the fountain, that makes some sense. So anyway, let's go back to out the exit here, come in this direction here, a first aid here. So here's mile four, and we're starting to get into where the corrals were. So this is where uh, if you're late to your corrals, you're going to get in people's way. And then mile five, mile six, uh, around this um, cloverleaf. Uh, fairly certain we've been going like this uh, for more recent courses. So taking the clover leaves one extra little hill, but we get rid of some clover leaves later and some uh, bridges later so that should be helpful. Okay, so moving on from there, mile seven, mile eight, we're um, so about miles. This is the the gateway for the entrance to Magic Kingdom, the the big arch that makes it look like we're not actually going underneath the arch that's disappointing hopefully that's not true uh but yeah so then um go back up here so yeah so that looks like that's the arch there and then uh through here still through the parking lot to add a little bit more time in this parking lot so we're losing some highway miles but we're getting more parking lot miles uh, mile 9 is where we're at the uh, TTC, and then mile 10 is where we're hitting your Magic Kingdom up here. So that's um, kind of where I predicted. I figured we'd be mile 9 or mile 10 uh, getting here um, by the Magic Kingdom with a, a change course, so I was pretty close there. So then, yeah, so here we are here. This would be in about mile 5 and say, the 2019 course. Uh, actually, it's not, because, so this is interesting, uh, last few years we've come this way through the bus loops, and if you look at my 2019 half marathon course, this is where I took a dive, right about here, I'm like, plunk, and uh, yeah, so we're going to bypass through the bus loops and instead go back through the this back entrance way, which is the older way of doing the entrance to Magic Kingdom, uh, which is always kind of interesting, I mean, this is... The old way, or the the last couple years, coming through here and coming through the main gate, um, it kind of opened up, and you see the tree a little bit, and then you get a better, you get a close angle coming in to see the uh, the uh, the castle here. Um, but this is kind of cool too, because you don't get a hint of the castle. You come in, you see the big Christmas tree will be up. You come in, you make the corner, and boom, it's like this big reveal. It's not a sneaky reveal. It's just suddenly it's there. And that's kind of cool. That will be interesting though, because um, 
even with the half hour earlier start race, with the extra five miles before you get here, I suspect there'll be fewer runners that get to see Magic Kingdom in the, the pre-dawn uh, period where it's nice and, uh, like, you get the nice blue, deep, deep blue sky and the lit up castle with all the Christmas lights still on it, things like that. So I suspect fewer runners will get to see that this year. Um, so that's a little unfortunate, but uh, eh, it is what it is. You still get to see it, and you still get to run through the castle. So um, yeah, so it uh, looks like most of the course through Magic Kingdom is standard. Um, Tomorrowland, uh, past the teacups here, uh, over by the circus area. Go by um, uh, the Little Mermaid ride and uh, be our guest. Come out, go by the carousel, through the castle, and then into Liberty Square. Coming over and going through um, Frontierland and exiting. So yeah, that looks to be about the normal course. And then, um, yeah, again, you get your water and food right at the end of Magic Kingdom there. And then uh, Cohen Alley will still be here, going past the Grand Floridian. Um, so your halfway point here now will be uh, uh, here by the parking lot for uh, Magic Kingdom. And, yeah, then we make the cut here. This is all pretty standard. Uh, for the last couple years, uh, and so is this section here. That's all pretty standard. One thing is that is missing for the run towards Animal Kingdom down here is the little out and back, uh, I believe on this road, that uh, was always cut by people. That will be um, gone. That being said, this looks like that would be an easy cut for someone that wants to cheat. Um, and you could cut here and probably shave three miles off your run, which is unfortunate because going through Animal Kingdom is gorgeous. Uh, that's one of the funnest parts of the ride, or the, the run for me. Um, but, yeah, so coming down here, assuming you're not a cheater, you're going to do what you need to do. Uh, and so the interesting thing here is this section from about mile 15 and a half to 16, a little bit over 16, will have runners going both directions. And I hit the wrong button. So it has runners going both directions on the road there. So you can see um, as you get down this direction, uh, you come into Animal Kingdom at the back. Let's go down here a little bit so you can see the actual, what you actually get in Animal Kingdom. So come through, we get fairly similar to normal course, I believe, down the north side of the park, uh, over by Everest, and out through Dino Land. And then instead of, uh, once you get out of Dino Land, you come out of the park. Um, it used to be you would make a right-hand turn to kind of go out by the uh, parking lot out here and cut through the parking lot and come down here to make the big run over to ESPN. But we're not doing that this year. Instead, we get this go backwards and I hear about... Uh, mile 18 and a quarter, 18 and a third, uh, you'll get into traffic going the other direction. Uh, this corner here, back to 19, and this is where we start our run towards uh, Blizzard Beach. So this is where I, this last, from about mile 16 on, is about where I was quite a bit off on my predictions. Um, mostly because I assumed that we'd still get some of this, this highway down here, and we didn't get any of it. I did not expect Disney to do this loop back. I just assumed we would go down here and then do a cut up to Blizzard Beach, not, um, this little bit of a mess we're about to get into. Um, so yeah, so there's coming down through here, mile 19, coming towards Coronado Springs, mile 20 here. Uh, water stop, and with the water stop and this uh, mile 22 of people coming back the other direction, there's another opportunity to skip. So if we're totaling that, people want to skip, we've got three miles they can jump here. Or actually, probably four and a half, or three and a half here. They can probably skip another two miles here. So now we're about five miles people can jump away from. That's kind of sucks. Um... 
And then, yeah, so here we'll have both uh, uh, runners going both directions on this road here. Heavily cutting off Coronado Springs, but I think just because of the way this will go, the, uh, the runners will be on the south side of the road here, and the north side will still be available for in and out traffic from Coronado Springs. But, yeah, so we get down here, uh, mile 20 on the road here, and where I had hoped or predicted is that we would come in down here. Now, one of the reasons I had thought we were going to come down this way is to come down this uh, off-ramp uh, by the McDonald's here and then come in and come into uh, Blizzard Beach from this angle, essentially. But um, when I made that prediction, I did not realize that um, this McDonald's was going to be renovated. Like, yeah, renovate. Like, they completely ripped it apart So um, and removed it. So... Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, so obviously, you don't want to send anybody near that construction zone. So that's that is what it is. And then, um, yeah. So, so what did they actually do? So they brought us in from this direction up here in the north, and so it's coming in one side of the parking lot, and we go into uh, over here, uh, this area over here. So that's not the main entrance. We will enter through a different back area. And you get a little bit of a taste of um, uh, going through uh, Blizzard Beach. But I'm not sure what much we will actually get to see. Maybe just get some glimpses through the park here. We won't get uh, a, a much time in here at all based on their... I'm not sure how well to scale this is, but this is just... Uh, it's going to be less than a quarter mile in the park itself, I think, but... It is different, so, and we get to miss CSPN, so I'm not complaining. I'm just would like to have had a bit more there, uh, and then come back out. We'll come out the main entrance from uh, Blizzard Beach there, and then this is I was correct here coming through here, uh, uh, making the run past Coronado Springs, completely bypassing ESPN down here. So I was fairly correct here, but I had us at about 22 to 22 and a half miles at this point, leaving room to maybe do more Hollywood Studios. They have now instead taken less Hollywood Studios. In the last few years, uh, because of the Toy Story Land and Star Wars uh, area, Galaxy's Edge construction, um, they have cut down heavily the amount of uh, running you get in Hollywood Studios just to avoid that construction area. Well, now that uh, Galaxy's Edge is super busy with the extra, with the second ride now being open, um, they are now avoiding pretty much all of Hollywood Studios. So we'll get to come in here by the uh, the amphitheater where they do the uh, Beauty and the Beast, and you come past Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, and the last couple of years the shortened route at least taken us down here to the main street and then out. Uh, so we're actually getting that much less Hollywood Studios than we normally get. So we'll just, uh, we'll get a taste of Hollywood Studios and then, uh, standard from there out the parking lot. Um, and then on the pathway towards the boardwalk. So yeah, so this is on the pathway out towards the boardwalk and, um, this is pretty standard, um, Last year, they did do make this change. Last year or the year before, um, they made this change. Now, traditionally, uh, after mile 24, you'd come along, you'd bypass this corner towards the boardwalk, you'd go across a couple bridges here, and you'd run in front of the Yacht Club and Beach Club resorts. And honestly, that stretch, that like less than a quarter of a mile, uh, has been like, is what has cost me a fortune. Because I just love that section. But they have now changed it. So you make the run in front of the boardwalk instead. Um, coming back through here. I'm not 100% sure why they've made that change. Um, but they have. Maybe it's a little bit more congested right here. Uh, that one section. And they figure this is less congested on the boardwalk. I'm not really sure. Uh, and then, yeah, we go towards uh, Epcot. So there's the entrance to Epcot up here. Um, that doesn't look to be significantly different. I was looking to see if there was going to be much changes there, um, because the new Disney Skyliner station is there, and this is not obvious that there is any change. 
it still looks to me you know what I, if i read this right like this is this is england right here here's the english england pavilion right here normally we would come in this back side over here just cut off the edge and come across here this to me reads like we're going to be going through actual international gateway instead of this back area over here so i'm not sure if this map is correct yeah because if you look up on this one here's england here here's canada and here's the one special building used for special events and normally we would cut through here just on this far side or just on this side here and um that's not happening this looks like at international gateways where they have their water and first aid stop and then we'll go right through international gateway that's that is very different that's that, that's cool um we'll see how that works um i mean yeah we've gotten a lot of extra behind the scenes uh so a little bit less right going through epcot it's not so bad uh and then yeah we'll hit um the standard run through most of world showcase and where we end up with the deviation is instead of uh, continuing on this looks like it's between Epcot or between China and Norway we'll make the cut out um, which uh, yeah normally we'd go past Norway and uh, Mexico come do the run straight through future world here and go past um, the uh, spaceship earth and then kind of run out through the bathrooms uh, and then finish so instead uh, we will after China make the cut out and then we'll have the little uh, part of the course that will be shared with between mile three and mile four yes yeah, a little part of the course that is shared between mile three and mile four and then um, continue out mile 26 and the finish so um, there is definitely lots of changes in the uh, in the course the um, the it's a kind of it's a mishmash of uh, taking the ideas from some of the older courses where you got the early Epcot uh, mixing it with um, uh, some of the the courses that have been standard for the last little while and then adding um, some new elements mostly probably to get around construction areas where they know they're going to be congestion like Hollywood congestion like Hollywood Studios uh, it's not runner congestion it's just congestion congestion with other people so just other uh, resort guests and things like that so it should be interesting I would have liked to have had more Blizzard Beach than what's provided um, definitely would have liked to have more Hollywood Studios I don't know there, there's definitely lots of capability of course cutting uh, which is unfortunate uh, back and forth where people will just kind of people that are just there to get the metal and don't care about anything else will still do some cutting so yeah um too much ability to cut that's uh that's unfortunate um but positives yeah like yes no more espn we do get a taste of blizzard beach um they didn't remove um anything from magic kingdom so that's good um the the little taste of Epcot in the morning is kind of cool, um, but I'm not sure as much as I would want, but considering the construction in Future World, I can't see how they could have given us more than that. That being said, I could have seen giving just a bit more Future World, or a bit more, giving us a bit more of uh, the World Showcase by sending us through, um, you know, even where we uh, leave early on um, by Mexico if they'd given us that as the exit for um, the end of the race we would at least got a little bit more um, we got you know Norway would have been included in the in the run there too but but yeah so I mean it's going to be interesting it's um, it still needs to be seen whether it's an interesting good or interesting bad or a combination of my main concern is the start corrals and the overlap of the course around the star corrals that's going to be interesting and it's going to be uh i'm going to wait and see what that's going to do but it, it's something different i'm going to uh 
go do what I got to do on the course. And uh, but yeah, anyways, it's going to be interesting, and I'm looking forward to the race in uh, just over four weeks. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, please like, uh, subscribe, that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, like I said, I'll have the uh, link in the bottom for my uh, my original guest video, so you can see for yourself how close or how far away I am. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the course.